What is up, party people? All right, let me go ahead and get over to the Discord. All right, yeah, they're going. All right, um, just wanted to go live, see what was going on. Gonna have an open topic, open panel, whatever goes, uh, except for the bad science denying aspect of a shape. Right? So you say it? Perfect. Um, I just want to say a few things first. Um, and if you're new to the stream um, and you're like, why is he late? It's because I'm always late. Um, and for those that know that, it's always farmer's fault. Everyone in the chat, see that guy, farmer's boy? Thank him. It's, he's always the reason. What's up there, Twit? How you doing? What's up, Hannah? How you doing? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what's up, RT? What's up, farmer's boy? Thanks for making me late. What's up, GPS? What's up, Montreal? Montreal, I think, will be joining us in Discord. He said they got Discord now. Um, let's see who else is here. What's up, no name? Um, who else? Who else? Who else? What's up, Soul? Davros is here. All right, so we already got a panel going. What's up, uh, Maxwell? already got a panel going. Uh, I see Barney, Davros, Farmer's Boy, and No Name are in there right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start that up, and we'll see where they're at in their conversation, because I haven't been listening at all. Um, oh, almost forgot. Um, the reason I'm doing a New Year's Eve Eve stream is because I'm betting money that tomorrow night there's going to be a lot of streams going on, and it'd be almost pointless. But I'm thinking... What's up, Secret? I see you. Uh, I'm thinking, you know what, uh, Gently's channel? I'm thinking, what if I live stream New Year's, but then just like jump around to everyone else's live streams and like stream their shit too? It'd be awesome. So, like, the different places will have their, whoever the stream is, will have their New Year's whenever, and we'll, we'll do it that way. Um, I don't know if I'm doing that yet. We'll see who's live at that time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a few things like we could definitely jump into, but I wanted to make this a completely open topic. So I'm not even going to talk about a topic. I'm not going to rant about something I heard, <coughs> Chris Berry crap, um, or anything like that. And uh, we'll see where this goes. Um, let's, let's, let's jump in. Um, hang on, let me see. Yes, he is. All right. What's up, guys? Yes, I am live. Woo! And possibly yay. What, what did you say? Woo. Yay. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure what you said. I was just asking. Don't be mad at me, damn. What? So, it's not me you want to have a word with. It's that, it's that bloody frame you want to have a word with. God. Well, I'm just saying... Um, did I, is that what I put? Did I really? <laughs> you said frame fault. It's like, who the fuck is that? It's not my fault. I did that on my phone, so... Dyslexic fingers. All right, so good morning, guys. Or actually, damn, it is afternoon, isn't it? Uh, no. <laughs> good morning, and, Sean. It is ten and, past nine a.m. in the future. Yes, thank you, future Davros. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, this you is guys the have New Year's Eve yet Eve. in Australia. Yeah, will those come out tomorrow? <laughs> twenty to eleven at night. It's twenty to eleven at night. No, it's only it 240. Is, it is over here in the UK, yes. GMT. What's going to be funny oh, is tomorrow, this... when you guys um, are in a different year... It's 40 past 11. Is he a twit? Is he, is he doing his as for his time? What time is he going to be doing his stream? What's up, Mav? I see you out there. What's up, Ma uh, uh, Matrix? There you go. So, like I said, um, are you able to unmute? I need you. Okay. So, I, I've posed it, you know, I made it this this time. It will be completely open topic to you guys. I'm not going to uh, start a question or a rant or anything um, at all. Just, you know, guys kind of know the rules. So, uh, speak. You guys were talking before I got live. Well, now, why are you all quiet now? Because you guys are foreigners. All three, y'all. <laughs> Here we I'm go. Not order, Sean. No, I'm you're not. not I didn't say you were. I, Farmers, Davros, and Barney. They're the foreigners. 
I am not a foreigner. You are a foreigner. I'm not a foreigner in my own country. I'm an Englishman Good. in England. There he is. You don't That's want me I'm to pick the topic. <laughs> I'm an Australian That's... Aboriginal. Turn your watch page in off, Australia. my friend. You know what Aboriginal means, right? Yes, indigenous. Davros, we know you are indigenous. We do know that. We know <laughs> that, Davros. Hey, <laughs> everyone, Davros is in, in divert. What is it? Say it again. If he's indigenous, then I'm American. Indigenous, then I'm there you go. American. Are you? If Davros is indigenous, then I'm African American. <laughs> Wait, aren't we all indigenous of, of where we were born? Um, I don't know, but have you seen, have you seen this picture? That's like that's like Elizabeth Warren saying she's an Indian. And, and we're I all indigenous say, to Africa. I just want to say this right now, um, Nicole, Miss Miss Crash. Uh, thank you, 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 thank you. So, Sean, you think you think Jackson was was overweight? Oh, okay. So. uh what Maxwell's talking about is uh, Fader Menelenko uh, fought Rampage Jackson uh, a couple nights ago on Bellator. And Maxwell had said, you know, said something in the comments the last stream. And I went and saw the link that he sent, shared the, the fight. And the first thing I noticed is yes, <laughs> Maxwell Rampage looks like an overweight has been retired guy. He looks like he hasn't trained in months. You know, he's been training this, he's been training like crazy. But if 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 he would have hit Fedor, he would have knocked his ass out. I guarantee. I, I don't think so. You, Fedor has been hit by many. And remember, he yeah, went on I his. See. He was a, he. His only losses happened recently. Those are in like the past couple of years. So his whole career, he knocked out all the guys you know as champions before. Yeah. Yeah. He's, are you he's talking not, about Fedor or UFC guy? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. He's never been UFC. But MMA guy. Well, he went to Bellafort, I think. He what? Yeah, he used to. He went to uh, the other. The other. Uh... He used to be Strike Force or something, didn't he? Well, no, no, no. He used to be that? part of the One Production. One Production. Yeah. So, um, Fedor is actually a part owner of One. So that's why he's always fought for one. And the reason he never went to the UFC is because the way one production works is he they want to be uh, the promoter or co-promoter. And because UFC would never co-promote with somebody else um, and actually make money, <laughs> um, that's why Fedor never went to the UFC. Because they, they UFC would never co-promote with them. And anytime Fedor fought, they wanted to be the co-promoter. You're talking about the Russian guy? Yep. Yeah. Well, he's badass, but I believe he was in the UFC in the beginning. No, he never once fought at UFC. Never, never, never. It was like the big thing because um, everyone, cause everyone wanted Fedor to go to the UFC. Like they, like it was gonna, it would have been insanely huge if he had. Because like I said, most of the guys like the. Um, the Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Gonzaga's brothers, uh, um, Fedor, or not Fedor, are damn Alistair Overeem, uh, Shamrock, uh, Dan, Dan Henderson, all the big names you guys have heard of. UFC has belts, they all used to fight in Japan, and when they used to fight in Japan and, and the really up and comings of MMA, like, um, a lot of those guys have fought with each other fought Fedor that Fedor got his name because he's beaten all the champions the UFC has had in the heavyweight division oh yeah he's badass he's one of my favorites yeah I mean and the thing that was it was that was weird is he's never been built he he looks like a he looks like a looks like a dad Arch potato <laughs> <laughs> he got a belly kind of natural assassin I call him exactly exactly but his skills in the ring are so fucking incredible it's like insane it's it's just it you couldn't even compare it's insane one of my favorite fighters to uh, to watch in the past I really enjoyed watching uh, 
the hell's his name? Conor McGregor. I, I used to, I like watching him. He used to be wild man and thing. I don't know what happened. Uh, he, the money. It was definitely the money. He, he took the money. Oh, tr oh, that's the other thing. Trust me. Conor McGregor, his nose ain't clean. And oh, I've heard that yeah. through the grapevine. That's not even MMA media stuff. So, so Twit, Twit in the, in the chat said that I know way too much. Twit, if you knew how much I knew about the MMA world and the insides and outs and the underground parts of it, you would, it, you would like, why would I ever talk about these topics? Trust me. I know so much more about that than I would ever in my life think that I could ever possibly know about science. I could do, I could talk shit. We could do a UFC uh, fight, or uh, MMA so stream, this whole thing, if I don't care. I would love to. You're a you're a fanboy of MMA. Now, Davros, you would think I was a fanboy of MMA, but remember, I fought, so I was actually in the, the circles so yeah, of all these you people. You no longer you no longer fight, so you. Oh, but I still I still train. I still I still train with these people. I've man, with I've your broken bro hand. Well, not at the moment. Well, look, check this out. Oh no, no, actually, when I when I did my hand, I I was there. I just couldn't roll for very long. And uh, no, no, but look, so check this out. Um, no. Like everyone talks about Eddie Bravo, I, I've rolled with Eddie Bravo. I've rolled with Eddie Bravo probably about four or five times. Um, nope, never rolled with Joe Rogan. I don't train in L.A. for one. And uh, no, I didn't smoke with him. And no, we didn't talk flat Earth. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck would want to roll with that hairy son of a bitch? I would. I would Bravo is badass. Out. But Joe Eddie Bravo, he, he's like a Eddie, he's like a fur ball. <laughs> he, he, he's I've heard he's like his thing is like he's just oddly strong, like for real, for real. Yeah, that's some good shit. How can he not like them? You remember Hoyce Gracie, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Do I remember God? Do what? Do you remember one of the one of the jujitsu gods that there is? <laughs> Absolutely, I know yeah. who that is. Do you remember Elvis Presley? <laughs> That's exactly yeah, exactly. Do you, you know Helio Gracie? You know you know who it is? Name <laughs> only the, the founding father of Brazil Brazilian jujitsu. Oh yeah, I've heard of it a couple times. <laughs> no, nah, I never heard of it. <laughs> Wait, you never heard of Helio Gracie? Of course, man. I have. Okay. Uh, I was okay. taping the the first USC. I have it on CD on tape. Believe it or I not. I was just watching it last night. That's one of my passion. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love the, the martial arts big time. Uh, I don't know who Obi is, but you are now good to go in the, in the on the stream or on the Discord. I mean. Oh yeah, that's like I said. I I trained with Dan Henderson and all those Team Quest guys. I've I've trained a lot. Of, I got I'm lucky. The, the guy I trained with, the guy my coach, my instructor, he he basically is one of the founders of Team Quest. So I got an opportunity to talk. And meet and train with a lot of people, a lot of people. Dan Henderson was badass too. So good on you, man. Oh yeah. Oh, I, okay. So I like I said, I've I've rolled with him before. I didn't do any. I couldn't do anything. He's that dude is. He's one of those oddly strong dudes too, because he looks like an old dude when you meet him. <laughs> he 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 can't move. It's weird. He, he like. Um, the dexterity of your muscles, you would think it would become better. His got worse over the years. He barely can walk. He can barely climb stairs. But the second, like, he's in a competition or something, something happens. And he turns like rubber man. It's the weirdest thing in the world. And then he taught me a lot about cage. I like fighting against the cage and shit. So, uh, luckily, I got punched a lot. Luckily, not his hardest. Thank God. And for, the Sean is badass. Those are and for the guys record, guys, <laughs> I hate boxing. I hate it with a passion. I hate everything about boxing for this one reason. The second 
you uh, get into a, mat, uh, a boxing match and I'm watching it, I go, why aren't they kicking him? His knees way out there. <laughs> why doesn't he take him down? Um, I, you can't I, box with your feet. Well, you can kick with your feet and you can take down with your wrestling skills and you can ground and pound and then choke him out. <laughs> this guy got fucking gloves I'm on. I'm Butterbean. Yeah, you are Butterbean. I got many Butterbean butter pictures for you. No, he just had a hard head and a heavy, a heavy hand. The second he started losing, because people started realizing to stay out of his range and, and back off and wait until the later rounds, and then that's when he started losing. He didn't go undefeated. Yeah, I think that when they put it, when they started him out, didn't they like uh, change the rounds to like two or two rounds or three rounds or something? But they didn't last that long. But yeah, that's the contract. That's all the contract they cared about. Yeah, you gotta remember when Butterbean was around. Go- yeah, he couldn't go more than four rounds without freaking dying of exhaustion. Yeah, he didn't. And that's why the first and second round he was knocking people out because he knew he couldn't either. And if even again, he, I mean, he probably had one of the heaviest hands there there ever was in that time. But he was also coming from a time when it was really shady deals. Not saying that like they were fixed. I'm just saying you know he was getting into he was making contracts where it would never last ten rounds. But nowadays, you would can do that. It'd, it'd be a 10-round fight no matter what, and the guy would run circles around him until the sixth round and knock him out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Marty. Yeah, um, he, Marty says, uh, Fedor became famous when he started fighting for, fighting for pride. But if you go back and watch those pride fights, you will also see, one, the, the, his company co-promoting. One, Bellator and... I want to say the WEC before Zufa bought it, but if you if you watch around like the older stuff, you'll see like uh, co- it's always co-promoted with uh, one. Uh, if you if Fedor is fighting, well, and I you gotta I remember Strike Fedor Force also had a brother too. So say again. Why do I have Strike Force stuck in my head? What what was Strike Force? Strike Force was the old Bellator. Oh, okay. okay. No, no. Okay, so Strike Force was bought by Zufa. Who owns UFC? Strike Force basically shifted all their fighters between UFC and Bellator. Bellator was a struggling company at the time. Because Strike Force then went away, Bellator became the second the second biggest, you know, organization for that. So then it just became a farm, a farm league for uh, UFC. In a retirement home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you see the BJ Pens and the uh, other guys out there fighting now. But now, but see, here's what changed that up. When I know I'm born, I, there's so many people that are like, "What the fuck?" But yeah, guess what? I I know a lot about MMA. This is if you want to talk for hours, you just you just sprung it open. Um, I used to on. like I used to like BJ Penn until I seen the shit that he pulls. Oh, BJ Penn is a dick face. I've I've never met yeah. him, met him, but I I've been in the same area circle with him while he's like people are around him, and I know people that know him. He's a dick. He's a fucking dick. He like um I'm, I know you guys have probably heard about this. Please tell me you have. Uh, BJ Penn just got knocked the fuck out of the bar. It was funniest shit in the world. Uh, yeah, I heard about he was ta- that. <laughs> he was talking shit to some dude, and the dude just was like pop, and that dude just dropped. And BJ Penn, as far as I'm concerned, is BJ Penn. The name now, I don't, I, he's he's probably one of the, people say he's a legend. I call him overrated. He's never yeah. been spectacular to me. Yeah, he can twist his knee all the way around and put it behind his head and suck his own dick, but he's fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to, like seriously, he's always been good until it's time to be the best, and he couldn't do it every time. He's held. If crap you can't up. strike. If you can't strike, Sean, forget about any other talent you have. Yeah, well, that was the thing about him. You remember, he was like, he was a, a BJJ phenom. Like his dexterity and what he could do on the ground was was what he made his name on. Suddenly, he just thought like, I well, I can box with anybody, and then he just get his ass kicked every time he fought. Oh yeah, because you're good on the ground doesn't mean you can strike for sure. No, well, that's the that was the thing. Cause like so. If I got in a fit, if I get in a fight, or if I have a fight, we'll say better because I don't like street fighting. Um, if I get into a fight, I want it to be on the ground. 
I, I'll strike with you and, and that little blah, blah, blah until I can get a hole to get to the ground. I don't want to stand up with nobody. I hate standing up. I'm not a, uh, I don't, I hate yeah, boxing. My fucking hands hurt. Montreal, and unless your name is Diaz, then, then, then that's a different story. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, well, see, no, see, that's a, a the thing. Though the both brothers, Nicholas or Nick and uh and Nate, they both are they're not BJJ guys. Or wait, don't just hear that first. No, they have both they're boxers. In for constructing. You know, but that's the thing. And they they're boxers. Kids. But you gotta remember, they're boxers. Their co their coach, he's a boxer, their manager, a boxer, a famous boxer oh, really? like that. Oh yeah, they're boxers. They they were they started boxing long before jujitsu. They're just great at jujitsu, but they 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 and have the Mexican. best car- they have the best cardio out of any MMA fighter I've ever seen. I've I've never I, again I've never met either one of them, but I've been in the same gym when they're sparring, and look they'll spar for 15, 20 minutes, and the guy there's the people usually they spar multiple. Are dying of are dying catching air, and they haven't even started sweating it. It's insane. Those guys are insane. But yeah, they're they're boxers before they were ever uh, jujitsu. Yeah, they're. I hope uh, it sucks that Nate got that fucking. I wish he'd get some. I wish he'd get that scar tissue. Something they can do to that scar tissue so it doesn't open up so easily. There is a surgery. Holy crap, and it hurts. Okay, so. I, I've never had it, thank God. I do have cauliflower ear. Not anywhere near like those guys do. I just have a small bump. <laughs> but this is how I know what it takes. So you can. They'll like open it up and then cut out the cart, the old cartilage. The problem is is that it, it's, it's like the ugliest scar in the world. And it's going to do the same thing. It's just instead of busting open like every time, it'll just explode <laughs> it's just, it's gross it's not worth the shit people do it only I've when ex- the only time i've ever I've heard people doing it is when they get cauliflower massaging the ear hear. sure huh what i've had to explain what massaging the ear means oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that caught me off guard i was like excuse me um yeah that's you're supposed to if you don't then you become unfortunate like myself i will afford ever have it, it i've yeah, done everything there's, i can there's two contacts there's two co- one massaging the ear is to keep pummeling them in the side of the head mm. and the other one is that when they come out of the fight to this to the corner is you actually have to massage it to try and get the blood back into it yeah and if you don't do it quick then boom you got a nice little cartilage bump um i like it i don't care doesn't bother me. It's like I said, it's small shit. You can't, it's not like those guys you see normal. The only time I've ever heard of anyone getting the surgery is when they start losing hearing, which is, <laughs> this is unfortunately very common. Actually, I think the most unfortunate boxer of all time was Joe Bugner. See, I don't, I don't see, I, I, you're going to lose me in a second because I don't like boxing. I stay away from boxing. Yeah, okay. I just know so boxing because my coach made me do it. Yeah, Joe Bugner was three-time European heavyweight champion, right? The only hurdle he couldn't pass was Muhammad Ali. Well, that guy was a phenom in himself. See, that was and that was the one thing reason I stopped fighting. It was like I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not the one. I'm not gonna carry a belt. I'm just not. It's not gonna happen. At that point, I don't know why people keep trying. And it sounds stupid, but it takes a lot out of you just to be. And it, it just wasn't me. It's fun. I still spar, but I'm not. You want you want to hit me in my face? For what? No, I'm good. <laughs> well, now I just, but now I just do tournaments. Are more fun. They are. Conspiracies are so more fun. Are more fun sure. yeah. No, I, t- I have a channel. First... That's the thing. I have, have a... Got first today? Oh, what? What have you got for us today? Anything uh, controversial? Absolutely. I said it's on you guys. It's not on me. Oh, have you heard about the new cryo spray technique that they're using to f- uh, flash freeze? The f- you cut. You sound like you're on crash the phone. Hang on. I'll drop out. I'll come back in. Right. It's not my fault. Sure it is. <laughs> I saw Chris in the chat. I thought he was going to jump on once he heard us talking about MMA. 
Hey, Sean. What's up, Essie? It, <laughs> it's supper time for me. I'm going to take a little break. I'll be on a little later. All right, yeah, I'll be on for a minute. Cool. Uh, I want to pick this up uh, once again, the, this UFC stuff. It's intriguing. I'm yeah, glad absolutely. you're into this, bro. Oh, yeah, big time. Um, yeah. And we'll I'm talk sure, later. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If you're watching, I'm about to show my other channel. You'll see what I'm talking about because I have another channel. Too. Cool, cool. Let me see. Just finding the page. Mm -hmm. Dinner. All right. I mean, you don't have to just talk to MMA guys. We can change it up if you guys like. No worries. Oof. I'm just watching the California, Illinois football. Game. I'll share this on the other screen. Okay, so I was saying is, yeah, I mean, I, I I have another channel. I plan to start using it again. Um, again, I'm gonna show everyone on the screen. I'll I'll make it live for you guys to see in Discord. Yeah, so if you guys hit the live live link, you'll see the page I'm on. Yeah, I mean, I, I have a, a UFC. Like I said, I've never really tried to get it going. Um, I've been live a few times. Uh, turned into a big shit show for a minute because of the another live stream that I had started collaborating with. Um, and I pulled out because it pissed me off. But, yeah, um, I'm probably going to start this channel up again. And then... Um, Start streaming a lot of MMA content. I mean, it'll be only MMA content there and discussion. So um, if enough of you guys want to, want me to do it, then let me know. And then um, I'll start that back up. But, I mean, I don't care if we talk about it now on this stream. It's just there. You know, it's it's guaranteed to be a lot more MMA only. Let me see. Okay, it works. We're back on. Okay, perfect. But anybody want to start a topic or anybody in the chat want us to talk about something interesting? Um, Marty was BJ Penn. Well, we need to yeah. talk about this framers boy. Yeah, I don't know. If that was my computer's fault. Uh, hey, Marty. <laughs> um, yeah, BJ Penn. And that was the other thing about BJ Penn. Uh, he's a small dude. Like, he fights 135s. Um, he cuts from 155, but at a certain small point, he like over ate on purpose and so he could fight heavyweight in pride. It was weird. Thank God for uh, the Second Amendment. What? Um... That's a controversial topic. Did you see that jackass going to a church this weekend in Texas and freaking open fire and he got two people, but somebody in the back was carrying a gun and they fucking blew him away before he could kill any more people. Then that's that? that. I hope that advocates for uh, possession and carry. Because that's exactly why I think possession and carry is necessary didn't, as well. Didn't something happen in, in North Carolina this week? I think there's a lot uh, of things that happened. It just happened in Texas. It's just Sunday on Texas. Yeah, there's actually two incidents in Texas. In Texas. Um, let's see. I'm uh, getting something from Marty real quick. Um, yeah, there was... Um, like a bunch of uh, Hasidic Jews got attacked in New York, too, didn't they? Yeah, it's like a New York, tech, mm -hmm. two in Texas, one in, uh, I think, Alabama. I think it was Alabama. Cause some maybe oh, I hadn't no heard name. about the one in my state. Yeah, because <laughs> it was you. Well, <laughs> no, I, I'm far too lazy. I'm far too lazy to go out on a Sunday and attack anybody. I'm oh, that's hungry. right, because you're too busy preaching. Exactly. That seed. You guys like talking about <laughs> spreading seeds. That's so weird. <laughs> Isn't it just so deviant? But Sean. <laughs> 
You need to plant your seed. If you do not plant your seed, you cannot get Jesus to come inside you with his warmth. His warmth will help you grow. And the more tithe that you give to me, the bigger the seed and the bigger it will grow. And if you do not plant that seed, I cannot get Jesus to come in you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I hope he kisses you first. And if you have a problem with masturbation, Jesus will help you beat it. <laughs> Just beat it. Oh dear. Sean, uh -uh. What have you done? It's Sean's fault because he's a foreigner. No, definitely not the foreigner. That's for damn sure. I've already established well, yeah, that. Your name's Sean. Right? Your name's no, Sean and okay. it's spelled European. We, we need to do this? We can do this. This is the new thing now, all right? <laughs> I want everyone to understand that this is the Institute of Truth Army, and we do peer <laughs> reviews here. If you need thing, everything, something peer reviewed in the chat, tag me, Come let here. me know, and we will. Matter of fact, that's what we're going to do right now. So, in the chat, and this is only in the chat. Oh, well, it can be someone a request from in the panel, but in the chat, ask a question. If we were pre-reviewed for you. It's very simple. Um, it's exactly how the scientific method um, does their pre-review or science does their pre-reviews involving the scientific method of Discord, and we will figure this out for you. <laughs> <laughs> but be warned, the chances are you're wrong. <laughs> Probably. No, that's not true at all. I was right all, all about, yes, the last time I did it. keep forgetting there's a lag in the discord or not discord in the youtube it takes everyone yeah. a second to hear what i had to say yeah it takes, it takes a little bit though. well does anyone in the in here need something peer-reviewed um nothing springs to mind i mean i've heard enough bollocks over the last couple of days i think your brain's going to shut down um, that, well, that's the best time. It doesn't have to be the meaning of life, farmers. Well, Framers. Too, you know that. Matter of fact, Framers. I'm going to be a dick right now. Just, I'm going to be a dick. Hang on. There we go. That's we need to peer review no name. Well, thanks, mate. <laughs> Framers boy. I knew what you were bloody doing. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. As soon as you said hang on a minute, I thought he's gonna change my name, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I could I could resist. Very I didn't know Bruce Lee liked Jit Jitsu. Oh yeah, he was a very big advocate of it. He thought it was awesome. Don't you mean Juju? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> my bad. You know what I meant. Why was he going to fuck with me? Yeah, I, I know, feelings. I know. But Sean, Sean, you do understand that there are certain entities in this world that are starting to hold us to the candle for any little fuck up, like 10 times 10 equals 10. Ignore him. <laughs> yeah, but it was one of ours and he got picked on by us. <laughs> I'm trying to get my Discord to work because it's not seeing any of your guys' names. Someone's got to talk. Talk. Yo. Okay, so some of you guys aren't seen on the Discord or on YouTube because you, you got to refresh and leave, but I'm not going to tell you who. It's not my problem. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, I'm, uh, I didn't know that, Gleam. Yeah, I looked that guy up. I didn't know about that guy. Yep, Chin. That's that's what Gleam said. Yep, Chin. <laughs> that's better. Um, Marty, if you're thinking of it, not so much judo. He was more into the Japan the Japanese jiu jitsu, which is actually different from Brazilian jiu jitsu. But Brazilian jiu jitsu comes from Japanese jiu jitsu. Which came from punch that bloke in the face before he punches you. Say again? 
it all comes from punch the guy in the face before he punches you. Yeah, and jiu-jitsu. jiu-jitsu in any it. form, any form of fighting, it is punch the other bloke before he punches you. It does not matter which one you talk about. If you get the upper hand, you win. Um, it's on the same I, I'd say different. I think I can beat you in a fight without one throwing one punch. Yeah, I'll kick you in the nuts and you'll fall. No, you can't kick me. If you get, I wish you would kick me in my nuts to bring that leg up. I'll take it down. See, that's the best part about jujitsu. I could, I got, I won many of fights without one punch based on jujitsu. But, but Sean, you're caramel. You can't win. I'm caramel, therefore I do win. No, no, no. It's because you're caramel. You cannot win. No, it's because I'm caramel that I always win. No, it's because you're confused. No, no, you're definitely confused. Well, see, so you say that now, but you can't because that was then. No, but I can because it's now. No, it's not. It will never be now. It can never be now. It's now, uh, now, 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 no, now, it, it, now, 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 <laughs> now. Yeah, you can now, keep saying now, it, and every now, time now. you say it, by the time uh, you get to the third letter in that word, it's yeah. already there. No, it's still now. It, it, my scale has expanded. No, 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 no. Yeah, your causality yeah, yeah, yeah. is flawed, Sean. It's not. It is because if your now is no. one event, there's a duration to the next event, which then becomes your now. But then there's another duration mm -hmm, to the next mm -hmm. event that becomes your sure. now. The now is never there; it is always in the past. Oh, but it's now. No. Yeah. Look, uh, you have learned nothing from Slick, right? <laughs> <laughs> now is. Doesn't that go for everybody? Now is. No, then. it's not. It's not. Then. I only live in the now. You it's can't. The... It's not possible. No, no, okay. I actually like that conversation because, it, and, and I got, so here's the thing. And I figured it out in listening to him. You, you know, he kept saying there's, he's in the, he lives in the now because I'm slick. Yeah, and he doesn't okay. have any belief. But here's the problem. What if, and, and we kind of extrapolated on it. So, if what if we're talking about an event that lasts a million years? We it are doesn't matter now. because now has nothing to do with time. Yes, it does. No, it just attends. you have learned nothing from Slick again. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> 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 yeah, listen more. No, listen, I'm not listening to anything. I'm going to stay with what I know is right. Now has nothing to do with time, and it is. But it is. Holy. But holy to, to have a tear spell. What the fuck has happened to you? What? Where, where is Barney? What? <laughs> to have, but to have a to have a now or to have a then, you had to have a now. No, no, you don't. What the? Yes, you do. You can't no, you have don't. a then without the now. No, you don't. I, I yes, like do. this side of Barney. Keep going, Barney. Let's see. <laughs> what are you talking about? Barney he, he, does this all the time. It doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> me, look, me and Davros are on the wrong, on different sides of this, and you will hear Barney argue both sides in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> because, because, see, if if you call, if you say that now can happen, but now becomes then, that then cannot become the now. Sure can. How? Very easily by experiencing it. Oh fuck off! <laughs> Look, read up on the B theory of time and then come back. Uh, no, but I did start watching the information the information theory, and my brain hurts. <laughs> I thought the B movie did that count. Oh my fucking! I so Barney, you weren't here the other night when we were talking about that, were you? Or you were you? I might not remember. Uh, depends where. Um, I, no, no, um, I think Is it George had theory? brought it up. The information yeah, theory. Data. Yeah, it's it, it's also known as data theory. So or Shannon the Shannon theory. Shannon theory. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The way we can extrapolate data from different sequences of of symbols, structures, and languages to get our data. But the yeah. the whole thing is how we create new ones to work out something we have no fucking idea about as well. But we still can get data from it. 
Okay, pretty, so, uh, pretty kooky. So what we were talking about, Barney, is, is the radio signals that they they have received from from outer space. And I was trying to, to understand what they're looking for. Excuse me. What they're looking for. But then I realized what they're looking for is a human-like tr- trace of something, I guess. Um, and they're looking wrong? for... They're ro- looking for uh, an information-rich signal. Basically, yeah. let's say a signal which sends prime numbers. Yes. Okay, but here's the thing. What if, or how are we doing this? Doesn't, or better yet, doesn't that mean we're looking for something human-like, information-based? <laughs> um. Yes and no. So, yes, we are we are formalizing it in in human conceptions, in human categories, in human language. You're you're right as far as that is concerned. But those regularities, th- those that we are looking for, are selected because they are universal. Because no matter how you set up your categories, as long as you set them up to simplify things. There are certain things that always emerge that that are elementary, like prime numbers are um, integral to every numerical system. It doesn't matter which base you choose. It doesn't matter which mathematical system you choose, which geometry you choose. Prime numbers will always be prime numbers. They will always be indivisible by any other number. So if somebody wants to send out a signal which clearly communicates, hey, guys, this is intelligent life forms. This is not just some freak freak signal of nature. Then you would send prime numbers. Mm-hmm. So here's a question, Barney. <laughs> it's a question. So being... I'm uh, trying to think of how I this easiest way I can think for myself. So if, if uh, suppose a civil or a, a being is uh, millions of years more advanced than us, then they would be uh, in, the, in, the, in front of us as far as the direction of arrow of time is uh, in their galaxy system, whatever. Um, could the signal ever get this far to us, being that the universe is expanding uh, at such a high rate of speed and accelerating at the same time, would the signal ever even reach us? So, yes, yeah. there are places in the universe from which the signal will never reach us. And mm-hmm. as far as we've been listening and broadcasting, we've covered a tiny, 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 tiny area of space. Right? I think there's only something like 10 stars that we could have reached by our signal so far, something like that. Something really, really small. Right, I mean, so they would be looking and say say the uh, universe, the arrow of time, uh, the direction of travel that everything is expanding and accelerating towards is towards the finish line. Are they looking, this is just a question, are they looking towards the starting line? Because that seems to be where the, where it would be easier to, to capture a signal or if there was one. Uh, you're, you're framing the question very weirdly. I'm not sure I'm understanding you. Can you, uh, can well, you, if you think rephrase if it? You think, yeah, so like, it's just like the red, like the red shift work. Um, uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult to, I don't know how to rephrase, to to receive a signal that's traveling, like if that's traveling away from you, uh, than it is if it's traveling towards you. I, I can't reword it off. Uh, can, can I it is. Uh, it is the same, except that you are looking in a different part of the spectrum. But you don't know which part of the spectrum they're broadcasting in, so you're either looking in some parts of the spectrum which are 
universal and recognizable, such as the um, hydrogen hydrogen um, emission spectrum, right? Because that's universal and everybody will be looking at that. And if you want to communicate to something, that might be a good way to communicate. But then again, there's a lot of noise there. Or you might be looking, you're, you might be doing something, I don't know, that's related to, to being most resistant, like th that, that will not interfere with anything in nature. And we've done both, more or less. But it doesn't really matter if, if something is moving away from you or towards you to catch it. The signal has to be moving towards you. It, the sig For you to detect the signal, the signal has to be moving towards you. A signal which is moving away from you is a signal you will not catch. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you can't catch, you can't reach out and grab a signal. But how how fast is is the universe accelerating? Faster. It. I think I've heard it's faster than the speed of light. Information, but I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. So anything well, that's moving, than, anything that's moving faster. away from us faster than the speed of light is beyond our event horizon. We cannot see it. It is outside of our visible universe. That visible universe is currently still expanding as more and more light is reaching us from further and further away. But there are parts of the universe which are moving so fast away from us, way faster than the speed of light, that even the signals which headed out towards us will never reach us. Faster than the speed of light, you said, Barney? Yes. Doesn't that conflict with Einstein's uh, theory? Nope. Not at all. Nope. No. Isn't there a speed limit? Yes, speed there is. Space can move faster than light. The medium that light actually, travels in. It's not actually moving faster than light. It's just moving uh, fast enough to the where the light can't. It can't. It's hard. It's hard to think. It's hard. Yeah, exactly. You can, you can look at it this way. It's not moving relative to us at all. There is space being created in between us. There is more and more and more space. So much more space that it would need to move faster than the speed of light to reach us. Yeah, exactly. If Does that help? If, if it's <laughs> expanding at the speed of light then the light will never reach uh, that part because uh, it's expanding at the speed of light. Therefore, the if it's growing at, at exponentially larger, then uh, the light will just never reach there. <laughs> it's, the zero val it's the zero value. So if, if the galaxy is moving away at light speed and it's sending out light at light speed, it negates each other, and therefore we will never see. I love Gleam. Gleam says, Barney, I told you they only communicate by the magenta frequency. <laughs> magenta. Actually, there is no magenta. Say purple, by... dude. Yeah, if they Quit communicate by words. radio waves, you'll be looking for a signal of three to begin with. <laughs> well, cause okay, one... elaborate. <laughs> Okay, so a, a signal of one could be anomalous, whereas a signal of three in quick succession could mean, not only could, could mean a sign of some intelligent being having created the signal. Like, like, like Morse code. Look, and, and, and then, you have the, then you have the whole concept of information versus noise, where... Yeah, yeah. Random, randomly generated sequ uh, sequences are noise to us, but um, what was it? But you, you, um, but they are all signal. They are they are all all information. They are the most densely packed information that can ever be. Right? 
in order to for the information to be communicable, you actually need to insert voids. You need to add silences. You need to make a difference from that from that background noise. I don't know if, if I'm making sense. Like if you if you if you pack information as you pack information more densely and more densely and more densely, ultimately you you just get stochastic noise. Okay, so there's a question in the chat. Question is, um, couldn't one achieve faster than the speed of light, or faster than speed of light with a consistency increasing speed over a very long period of time? No. Your mass would become too great, and you would never achieve the speed of light. Uh, that's that's one way of looking at it. So for an, for for a distant observer, if you're standing on the on Earth. And looking through a very powerful telescope, somebody who is moving away from you, their readout for you would still read out the force that they're pushing, putting out, therefore the acceleration that they should be having. But you would be measuring that acceleration as decreasing, which would equate as though their mass is increasing. For them, they would just constantly be accelerating and accelerating and accelerating and accelerating at the same rate, at the same acceleration, and they could measure that acceleration. But the speed of light would constantly be moving away, uh, away from them. Like no matter which speed you're going at, the speed of light is always the same for you. It is always um, what was it, two hundred and. Right. So, 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 so from their know. point of view, they're not accruing any mass. Their their clocks seem to be ticking normally. Their uh, length seems to be normal, and they just keep accelerating at let's say one g, in infinitely. Yeah. Right. But the universe just keeps keeps shrinking and and getting closer to them, and and they tra traverse the distances in in shorter amount of time. Right. For for you, if you sat in a spaceship and went to the edge of the visible universe, you could do that at accelerating at one g in something like thirty days, or thirteen days, or something like that. Why? Because your internal clock, your perception of time, would slow down and slow down and slow down as you accelerated, and time would just pa pass faster for you. Right. But you will never exceed that speed. If you reach the speed of light, every, every distance would be traversed for you, for you internally, would be traversed instantly. Right? The light, the photon itself, does not experience the years that it takes to travel from a distant star to the Earth. It appears and then it's here, instantly, on its internal clock. Oh, to itself. Yeah. Like, if you could put a clock inside a photon, that clock would never move. It would just always show the same time. Right. You and your clock. And all of it is because the addition of speeds is not the, the simple intuitive um, Galilean relativity of v, V1 plus V2 equals V, v relative, right? If you have a train moving one way at 100 miles an hour and a train moving at, an, uh, at 100 miles an hour in the opposite direction, when they collide, they co collide at 200 miles an hour, right? For each of them. Because you add their velocities together. That works only under very, very, very small speed, small relative speeds. There is a tiny error in there, which is completely insignificant at these speeds. But as you increase your speed, that error becomes greater and greater and greater. And you get to a point where, um, what was it? Point, point 0.5 the speed of light plus point 0.5 the speed of light does not equal the speed of light. If you have two trains 
moving together, moving towards each other at half the speed of light each, they do not collide at the speed of light. They only collide at 0.75, right? At, at three quarters of the speed of light. Because that's how Lorentzian transformations work, because that's how how speeds add up as you as you increase speed. And I could give a formula, but who gives a shit about formulas? How'd you learn where'd you figure that out from the collider? Where did I mean where did they come where did they figure where did they that that that, 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 that is from? special relativity. That is so so Lorentz first solved it for electromagnetism. It is necessary for things to add up that way for Maxwell's equations to work in moving systems. And then Einstein adapted it in Minkowski space time for everything else. As first the special relativity and the general relativity. That was the solution that Einstein found which has then subsequently been confirmed in, in all of its consequences. In the colliders? Uh, they don't in the colliders the what? They don't reach the speed of light, Maxwell. I know they don't reach the speed of light, but they, they try to get as close to the speed of light as they can. Oh, and I yeah, was just uh, I was just wondering if that's where they've confirmed these uh, equations was with with uh, these colliders and the velocities. I think it uh, amongst other things, but you, in in a collider, you're measuring it from a separate frame of reference from from a frame of reference which is stationary, relatively stationary, right? So when you accelerate something to those speeds. As I said at the beginning, the thing that you will measure and observe about those particles is that they gain mass. As you input the same amount of force, as you impart the same amount of force onto them, they accelerate less and less and less and less and less and become more and more and more and more massive because their internal clocks become slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. And slower. Right. Interesting stuff. Somebody was saying something. So, what do you think the next big thing they're going to find at uh, with the super collider, barn? Um, I think that currently it's somewhat of a waste, wasted effort because they're not really looking for anything specific. The the specific. Well, I, I thought that was how you discovered things. Was not looking no, no, for no. Anything. So, um, yes, tentatively. To, tentatively, to some degree, and in some way. You, you don't do specific experiments such as this. Like, they, they were searching for um, supersymmetric particles. So they were yeah. searching for the Higgs, and they found the Higgs. And that was primarily the reason why, why the collider was built in the first place. And right. then they went, well, now we have this huge device. Let's look for something else. So we have these predictions from quantum loop gravity and from supersymmetry, and let's look for those. Oh, we didn't find it, which is a result, but then you kind of have to adapt and change your, your theory and look for the consequences of that adapted theory, and they didn't find it. And they're doing that over and over and over again, hoping that they'll stumble onto something. There are some, some promising happenstances, some things that, that don't really make sense. Um, the appearance and disappearance of pentaquarks, the, um, in, the, in the Higgs chain, there is too, too rapid of a decay of a top quark, which then indicates that it might not be a top quark. It, it might be the next generation of quarks, which means that there might be four, four generations of quarks. But those are all so tentative that there aren't even theories describing them. Those are just kind of 
thrown out ideas based on measurements and those measurements are so on the verge of what of what um the LHC can discover that the data they're, they're the signal of what they're searching for kind of appears and disappears right right it kind of gets lost in the noise that you were talking about earlier yeah so right right now they're kind of spinning their wheels isn't it also that they're looking for particular elements that may be able to be used to find such property? Particular elements? Well, you know, so the atoms from the periodic table, looking at particular okay. ones to collide together to find certain properties that you can't find, say, smashing, smashing a hydrogen atom with a helium atom or... Uh, so on and so forth. Is that not what they would be looking at doing? From what I know, um, LHC is working exclusively with um, protons, with with hydrogen nuclei. It, it's not. Oh, so it's not like made. One. It's not okay. made or fit <laughs> to to accelerate other kinds of of. Good thing Nuclei. digital demonic isn't working it. He'd freaking blow the whole freaking country up. <laughs> it was a question, Maxwell. Here, let's smash a freaking helium atom with the hydrogen. Uh, uh, <laughs> let's the, do the thing is, Sometimes the thing you is, gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet. The thing is, as you accelerate even such a small particle to such huge speeds, they they relatively get a huge amount of mass. So if you take a heavy, um, a heavy nuclei and try to accelerate it around a bend, you would need a much, much stronger magnetic field. Otherwise, it would just punch through, literally, in the curve. It's kind of like uh, going around a bend on, on, like in a small sports car and in a truck. If you try to take the truck around the bend at the same speed that you can take a sports car, it'll flip out and, and and like lose the bend right same thing here so large lar large nuclei collisions are done in linear accelerators and those accelerators are are made specifically for that purpose and that's done usually to to try to collide them at low speeds just just enough to overcome their repulsion, but not so strong as they would fly apart because you're trying to create a nucleus of a new element, like right? the, the high-numbered element. New isotopes? Oh, not new isotopes, new elements. Like um, the, the anan, Anan pentium, anan hexium, that, that were recently named as what was it? I know there's there's a bunch of uh, theoretical isotopes that exist, but they they haven't ever they haven't observed them. They, I can't remember what they are. So, and the isotope is. A nuclei which has the same number of protons but a varying number of neutrons. Hey, Barney. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like uh, this element 151 has uh, supposedly a stable isotope, uh, but it's non-existent. We can't. We can't replicate it. We can re We can re replicate an isotope of it, but it's uh, purely unstable and the decay. It just decays right away. Is that 151 or 115? One one five yeah, one fifty one is, is several rows beyond what we've got now. Uh, one. one 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 five is the element that Bob Lazar said he had gotten from wherever he got it from. Yeah, the hell but with the Bob only Lazar. no no no. I'm I'm talking about the actual element one one five that was discovered. Its decay rate is too fast for it to be on the island of stability. No, but there's there's theoretical uh, isotopes of one one five that are supposed to be stable. Just we have other 
uh, elements that have several isotopes where some of them are uh, purely unstable and, and the majority of them are stable. So th those are all still hypothetical. They're not even theoretical. There, there, there isn't a, a a set theory which which describes them or or functions. It's if we kind of guess if this works this way, there might be an island of stability here, but we don't know, and it might be somewhere else, and it might not exist. But given these assumptions we might find it. now if we find it that would be a strong confirmation of that hypothesis but yeah even one it, i mean even if they found one uh one isotope that that was hypothetical that that was stable uh that we don't have any stable isotope uh like that here uh but we have a hypothetical stable one if they were to find that it would change a lot of stuff would change the whole damn periodic table because in that that could mean that there's uh all kinds of isotopes uh with all these elements uh, there's you know several isotopes and several of them could you know be each each element could have a stable isotope we just couldn't we just can't find it we just can't <laughs> you know what i mean if they found one it would change a lot uh, it would it would open up space for a lot more speculation that does not mean yeah. that well, that's I, I understand what you're saying just just don't overstate it if you if you go too far you you like you, you um you're courting woo right you 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 are intentionally setting yourself up to fail okay well it opens opens a door for more speculation but it, it sure as hell would be exciting wouldn't it the door for speculation is open. Martin, can I ask you a question? Sure. I get that uh, the collider speeds up uh, the particles near the speed of light and they collide and then there's an image of those squiggly lines and that. Do you know how they read those lines? Because to a layman, they just look like squiggles. How do they make sense of it? Do you know how they do it? Uh, we, we've talked about this literally the other day on, on Shanji's, right? The, the simplest form of this, the, the form which is kind of really easy to explain, is the cloud chamber. Right? Uh, you have a, a box filled with water vapor or uh, hyper, air hypersaturated with water, water vapor and it really wants to condense but there is no nucleation site. When you run a fast particle through it, some form of ionizing radiation, it creates those nucleation sites. It, it bangs into other things, it creates a shock wave, creates those nucleation sites and you can see a trail, a cloud going after it, right? literally a contrail after that particle. Now, if that particle has a charge, then you can put a magnet next to it and it will curve away. If it's negative, like if, if it's negative, it will curve one way, let's say to the left, and if it's positive, it'll curve to the right, away or towards the magnet or depending on, on how you orient the, the, the setup. But, those particles have mass, meaning that they have inertia. So the same force will divert them proportionally to their mass. So you can say, if this has diverted this much to the left, it is negative and it has this much mass. I know what, what magnetic force I have put in my setup. I know how strong of a magnet I have put there. I know that particles are, are, um, have um, unit charges, right? Are um, quantum charges, sorry. Um, that, that charges come in discrete sizes. Therefore, I can say, well, it has a charge of, let's say, one, and it has curved this much, therefore its mass must be this. If I know its mass and I know its charge, then it might fit somewhere in the standard um, 
standard theory of particles, the standard model of particle physics. Or it is some combination of elemental particles from the standard model of particle physics. And only if you get a path which diverges from that and, and behaves strangely can you say, I have discovered something new or I need a deeper explanation, which then might be a combination or an interaction. Or something. So negative, positive, and mass. Okay, I'm starting to get it. You, you yeah, you, you look at the charges. Um, the, you have the four forces. You can use um, the electromagnetic force to detect charge. You can use inertia to detect mass. You can use um, interactions with other particles to, to detect weak nuclear forces. You can use combining and, and generating coupling with, with quarks and, and um, hadrons and other particles to detect the strong force. So you can kind of get those force-based properties of that particle. I get it. The, the question is, how accurate is it? Because I, I heard some names that they give up, down, left, right. Uh, I heard all those fancy names. There's like 21 particles or something. But how yeah. accurate is that? Those are just names. Those are the, the unique building blocks that we have identified so far. That fit in their place in the standard theory of particle physics. In the standard model. Um, how accurate is that? Those things have been proven by necessity. Literally. It, you need those things to you you necessarily need those things to be able to to work with particles to you necessarily need those forces and it seems that there might be a new force and a new particle just recently over the last few months which is currently dubbed i think it's x15 or x17 or something like that which seems to be a boson and seems to be a carrier of a force, but we're not sure yet. Which we is literally X17, thank you. Which is an interaction which has been very likely detected within the, the accuracy of, of our devices and seems to be consistent over different experiments. And it might, and, and it seems to act like a boson, uh, meaning a, a force carrier. So we're waiting for confirmation. Um, the, the, the stuff that is already in the standard model is kind of no, no longer controversial. Those things have been effectively proved. Right. You, you would need to, to put a dent into the, literally into the atomic theory and the quantum theory to, to say that those things don't exist or that they are, I, you would need to start science from the beginning to, to identify them as something else. And you might still come up with the same result. Thank you for clarifying that, Barney. Appreciate it. I'm still interested in this periodic table and isotopes. It's really interesting. I mean, because when I first looked at the periodic table, I was like, oh, it's just a neat little a neat little graph, basically. But no, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a lot more in depth. When you actually get into it and look into it, everything is arranged. Uh, by isotropic level and how many isotopes per per deal and uh, so like I said before if, if they were to uh, uncover uh, an isotope that is hypothetical um, it would change the periodic table as well it would open a whole new it would, it would just it'd be a freaking wrench I mean it wouldn't be a wrench it would just be a, a huge uh, more understanding of what's going on. Why? Why, would it why, why are you? Why are you? No, no. Why are you overstating it so much? Why? Why do you think that it would change so many things? We well, know there are isotopes. Would, 
Well, and I we know, know that some isotopes are stable and that some are unstable. Well, I know, I but there's 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 things in the periodic table that don't have isotopes. They're just theoretical. They're just hypothetical. We've never observed them. Um, the, and, that, and that's the way that the periodic table is set up. Uh, <coughs> Uh, what in the periodic table, table has been seen? What? What in the period? Oh, there's isotopes that are hypothetical in uh, in the periodic table that that were what? aren't observed. What? There are no isotopes. There are no there isotopes there in the periodic no. table. That's the base elements. What? Isotopes that are in the periodic table. The periodic table does not list isotopes. Oh, yes, it does. Like what? Name one. Well, I'd have to dig up my book, but I've got... It's, uh, the periodic table that I've got is... The periodic table is laid out uh, by isotope in a combination with element and everything. It's all... No, uh, the periodic it's, it's, table it's, itself... The periodic table itself always lists only the most stable isotope. Oh. I'm going to have to look and look at it again because, and then I because if it listed if it listed isotopes, you would have um, at least three, potentially seven different hydrogens in the periodic table. Well, exactly, and that's that's what I'm getting at. Yes, there's, and don't. There's several. Th huh? <laughs> Just like the hydrogen has a, a astronomical amount of freaking isotopes versus some things only have a couple. Uh, and it just it just seems to me that they should be searching for uh, these hypothetical isotopes. They wouldn't go on the periodic table, though, so I don't understand why we'd look for them. For the periodic table, at least. Well, I think that science okay. wants, needs to uh, know things that they, that they haven't discovered yet, right? So if there's hypotheticals... And they absolutely are looking for isotopes, but to say that they need them for the periodic table is weird. I don't understand what you mean by that. So hydrogen doesn't have an astronomic number of isotopes. It has seven known isotopes. Yes, yeah, seven known and what, three unknown or, or four unknown? You're asking me how many <laughs> unknown isotopes do we know? How can we know we have three unknown isotopes? Sorry, Barney. Okay, hypothetical. Is that better? But, but you can't hypothetically state something you don't know. Oh, I can hypothesize that there is uh, hydrogen-20. <laughs> it needs to be based on something. Some, somebody who is hypothesizing them is hypothesizing them based on some hypothesis, some, some structure, some explanation. I guess. If, if, that, if that hypothesis turns out to be right, then... If, if that ex, if that um, isotope is found, that hypothesis will be supported. Right? It will not be disproven. But the fact that people have ideas, that people speculate that there are ideas, does not mean that those things exist. Like proper proper epistemic attribution is required. Same thing for, I don't know, the, the cosmological theories and stuff like string theory. And... It's nice to speculate about those things. If you have a theory which confirms them and produces predictions which are then testable, great, let's test it. Once it is confirmed, once it stands up to test and becomes unavoidable, then it becomes real then it becomes um known otherwise everything that is unknown that is speculative is unknown and speculative sorry <coughs> barney are you are you implying that science doesn't care about my opinion 
because that hurts. Yes, my very much so. Get me, get me right in the field. Oh, science, science, uh, science lets you have your opinion and lets you form your speculation on that opinion. And then when you form your speculation, asks you if you can make it unambiguous. Can you test it against other... Uh, can, you, can you test it against the claim of it's not so? If you can't, then it doesn't care. It literally doesn't care at all. If you can, then let's do it. That, that's all there is to it. You can speculate about anything. If you, like, I, I was jokingly proposing this on, on one hangout, but if your hypothesis is that little green elves are causing gravity, that's perfectly fine speculation for forming a hypothesis. If you can turn that hypothesis into a testable hypothesis, meaning that you can disambiguate between that and that not being true, then it's science, even though it involves little green elves. And you test it, and if it doesn't work, you discard it. Science is a cruel mistress, it sounds like. Yep, she's a bitch. I don't Shanji, what was that quote? Uh, it doesn't matter who you are, what your name is, how smart you are. <laughs> if it is, if it's wrong, you throw it out. Yep. Unless you're Davros, and even when you're wrong, you're right. Davros is always right and wrong. Exactly. <laughs> it's a fucking conundrum, I tell you. Goddamn conundrums. <laughs> it's like I hadn't planted my seed. Yeah, absolutely, Tony. Uh, Tony says, yeah, I have some pictures of when I worked at CERN or at the Atlas and other experiments. If I can join, uh, I would share them, perhaps in the new year when I have my laptop and have my iPad access. Absolutely, Tony. What? I'd be honored to. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah. And hashtag corrupt Toady. Yep, hashtag corrupt Toady. Um, Toady, you do still have a channel <laughs> in my uh, Truth Truth Frontline server uh, where we have made a corrupt Toady uh, channel for you to uh, explore your horizons, so to speak. All right. no, I'll be back. All right, Oris. So, anybody, any other topics, questions, or anything I can answer because I am always correct? Uh, I think Why are you do... a foreigner? Ooh. So, we're we doing the preview foreigner thing again, huh? Perfect. Brian, oh, I no, see there. How you doing? The no, no, D Davros, Davros. We've, we've, we're doing a study right now. Can you please wait your turn? Thank you, sir. It's only in the no. profession of it's only in the profession of no, science. But you asked me a question I and understand. I said yeah. no. What okay, are you okay. Do? Davros. You're you're sitting amongst peers now and, and we're trying to do some scientific shit here. Can no, you please no, you're yourself? foreigners. Thank you. Brian, um is uh how would you ask this? Is Davros a foreigner? Uh to me he would be. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, GPS that, in the GPS in the chat. Can you let us know if Davros is a foreigner, please? Uh, it's in the same way that you that I would be a foreigner to you, there, Davros. Yeah, but I'm an Aboriginal. You're still a foreigner to us. I'm Native American, so. Yes, but I'm not far in my country. <laughs> so no basically, GPS says he agrees. All right. Um, no name. Is Davros foreigner? Oh, yeah. He's, he's totally a foreigner. Yeah. Exactly. But I tell you what. Okay, you cannot so confirm nor deny this. Is uh, I mean, Davros he faked a, a he faked foreigner? being American. I plead the fifth. He, wait, you guys you drank a fifth. <laughs> 
<laughs> Montreal, if you have a moment, uh, is Davros a foreigner? It depends where. In America yeah. or? Well, he's in Australia. Well, he's only a foreigner if he's not in Australia, but even if he's in Australia, if he's from English stock, he's a foreigner. Thank you, sir. So, Davros, um, a peer review of your peers um, have decided you are the foreigner. Uh, again, I'm sorry that you were wrong. Um, I understand you're indigenous to where you come from, <laughs> yet you are still a foreigner. But I'm foreign in my indigenous country. Wait. That's, that's funny. <laughs> Wait. Wait. Wouldn't all of Davros's peers also be foreigners? So technically, how can he be, how can we be his peers? Doesn't oh, wow. Australia have the oldest indigenous community in the world? 30,000 years, I believe. Uh, between 40 and 60. Davros, well, just we look all at it like know this. that that's impossible. Just look at it like this, Davros. You're a jukebox hero. Oh, sweet. Ooh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'll actually accept that. Thank you for pleading the fist. <laughs> and, and drinking it. Again, if anybody needs something peer-reviewed, we are gladly awaiting your request. It's going to be the uh, new thing. Oh, 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 oh peer-review that GPS is actually a ground positioning system. <laughs> it's not. I'm not, talking, I'm not talking about the one we use on our phones or in our cars. I'm talking about the bloke in the chat. Oh, GPS says what? Is he a ground positioning system? Um, I'm going to say yes, Brian. I thought that was a girl positioning system. So you could find chicks. I'm sorry. I was something addressed to me. I wasn't paying attention. Is GPS a ground positioning system? Not the ground positioning system, but GPS in our chat. I think on the ground, yes. Okay, okay. Digital. Uh, I I do believe he's actually a sock account, and he doesn't know where he is. Okay. No name? I always thought it stood for goalpost shifter, so, I mean, I, I guess I'll have to drink <laughs> a fifth, too. I mean, plead the fifth. <laughs> uh, Maxwell? Yeah, I thought it was Gucci positioning system, so I can't. I got to plead the fifth. Oh, okay. Uh, Montreal, if you're free. We can't tell because it's time dilated. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Wow, Interesting. we haven't met a consensus. <laughs> we have not. Sorry, GPS. Uh, unfortunately, you are not a ground positioning system. I'm going to go with hung jury on this one. Yes, I am hung, but we don't need to talk about that here. Fair. <laughs> Fair. I think your, your MMA nickname was Dick Dragon. Is that accurate? Yeah, but... But yeah, but not like D R A G G I N G. No, like a dragon. Like oh, oh, but it was, oh, okay. but it was I never, thought, never. I thought it was fire. a pun. I thought it was a pun. This whole. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, no, so, this, so, it, so. Uh, the <laughs> the uh, the ending with Owen was actually when he was a member of the Vietnamese crotch fighting tournament. What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> what the fuck did you just say to me? Brian actually made a funny. <laughs> Uh, someone had to have told him to say that. Who's who's fessing up? Oh, <laughs> uh, that one's got to be curved. Ah, uh, that angry old guy. I miss him. Good thing I don't have to talk to him every day anymore. <laughs> you guys are all actually, new to that. Sure. You guys like I sure. was talking to you guys sure. the other you're day. Actually, you're actually you're actually the embodiment of a Norse god. Did you know that? Excuse you? Because there's a Norse right, cool. god that was, was known for his being well endowed. Oh, well, of course. Well, if you ask my girl, <laughs> uh, we won't get into all that. Yeah, she said it's not the size that matters, it's the motion in the ocean. No, it's both. <laughs> we all know it takes a long time to get to England in a rowboat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brian's on a roll. <laughs> oh, stop while you're ahead. <laughs> Brian must have had a shift change. 
<laughs> or some sleep. No, he's definitely got to be delirious. That's what we're going to do. We'll try to figure out what, what makes Brian funny. But I think that's more of an extensive peer review. <laughs> that take, that I, take. I can tell you exactly what it is. It's having four days off for Christmas. That's what it is. Ah, uh, he, He's in his actual right mind. Sean, to- Toadie has just proved how boring he is. Is that is it in his last comment? Yeah, I I had my DNA tested, and I am as British as you can be. Very boring. I hope for something, in, hope for some interesting stuff, but nope, I am boringly North European. <laughs> <laughs> Except when he goes to Levi's. I'm just saying right now, Tony, go to the truth line, the truth line, uh, truth front line, and scroll down. There's a corrupt Tony's channel there, and there you will find homework. Review it, and we will go over it later. Review it, study it, and uh, then get back. Because <laughs> Sean will test. That was a fun peer review. I mean, we could peer review anything again, people. GPS broke the peer review. Yeah, he did. He actually did. That was That was rough. But see, that, that goes to show that peer review doesn't always work. I keep forgetting that. Tony uh, thought I was gay. What? That hurts my feelings. Yeah, he said when he first heard me, he thought I was gay. Well, Tony, I'm going to come and knock on your car window and then put my hand <laughs> on my pants and see how gay you are. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I just need you to step on the oh. brake twice and turn on your interior light, please. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I have to do this now. I have to find the stream that he told us that story, cut it, and then upload it. That was the most eye-opening story to Tony. <laughs> Tony needs to be corrupted. <laughs> I'm starting to feel like Pete Shea. Oh, don't say that. I mean, because, I mean, Matt. think about it. I mean, you think you... You almost think that how how can it? It's almost like it's a freaking movie. I mean, really. If, if look at look at uh, the politician that's running for uh, president in the Democrat, uh, Pete Buttigieg, and he's 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 a uh, uh, what do you call it? Homosexual or or whatever you want to call it. Jesus, I mean, really, 2019, how the fucking hell? Max. <laughs> Come on, man. Well, I know, but I mean, how how ironic is that? We there's a gay guy running for president, and his last name's Booty Judge, Booty Jizz. No, Booty Jizz. No, it's not. No, it's Booty Jizz. No, Booty stop Jizz. saying. Stop saying. <laughs> <laughs> Booty Jizz. So how weird. ironic is that? I think it actually might be Booty Jizz. Somebody uh, had to fucking make this shit up, dude. Somebody scripted this shit. There's no fucking way. A gay guy has a last name, Booty Jidge. I mean, come on, Booty Jizz. That's too close to Booty Jizz. You get what, you get what I'm saying? That's just maybe it's, maybe it's too it's close. Just, maybe it's in your head. This shit that scripted, dude. Somebody scripted this yeah, shit. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a Pete Shea conclusion you jumped to. There. Nah, dude, it's too perfect. How the fuck is that? It's that's too perfect. Too, that's too oh, perfect. really? I mean, how many other countries is booty uh, an innuendo for? Bu- I don't know how many how many booty judges do you know? <laughs> Just the one. But I'm asking, like, how many how many country how many languages is booty uh, uh, a, a euphemism for? Probably just America. After okay, Pete. I don't know. America made it popular. That's for sure. Uh, point, trolls versus point trolls. Has, trolls versus trolls has just uh, uploaded Arwen's spat from Jose's yesterday. I'm I so happy I missed that shit. Oh, Arwen dude. is like the worst. Arwen doesn't. Even, uh, Ar Arwen. Oh, fuck Arwen. Arwen fucking basically is one of the most non-claiming, claiming, un- misunderstood, misunderstanding. 
I don't even know where to go from there, but it ain't good. He's a special person. That's why I've never had a conversation. I said one conversation with him, and I thought he was going to fucking jump out of his own skin. It scared me. Are you scared? Yeah, I was scared I was going to get Armin all over me. <laughs> so that was the thing. When I was a flat earther, I didn't watch any of these. I had no I I didn't watch Nathan when he was a normal person. When he wasn't all irate. Like I remember seeing a few times, like he'd be on with the what they called themselves the potatoes. Like I remember him from that. And he was a respectful person. I don't think I had ever heard him cuss. And then I don't know what happened. Maybe I don't even know. Maybe he found some really good crack. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know. But he turned into a complete asshole overnight. It was like he was getting paid to do it. <laughs> hmm. Funny, that. Yeah, a lot of them. I realized a lot real quick. A lot of those guys I wasn't listening to for shit. They had nothing to offer me. And I realized that fast. That was one of the things as a flat earther I, I questioned. How are these motherfuckers getting away with the bullshit they're spouting? Do you guys hear this shit? And they're like, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. First time Bro Sanchez talked about free energy, I was I wanted to jump through my fucking computer screen to whip his ass. Call him a fucking liar. Dude, if you think that's bad, you should hear Chemo's definition of free energy. I refuse. I refuse. See, that's the other thing. I was saying earlier, you guys are like newbies. You guys are hearing all of Chemo's new, brand new shit. Unfortunately, it's not brand new. <laughs> I've been listening to that shit for oh. three and a half years. Three and a half years. I like David. Flatter. Oh, yeah, David, what about too. David? Oh, David, yeah. I've known him just as long. Um, yeah, no, so, I've, heard, I've, heard him, I've heard him before, right? Oh, no, no, but he, you don't know. He you changes, don't. But he changes his argument, though. Oh, David is, okay, don't talk to David. David is as dumb as bricks. Flat earthers. Mute him. It's fucking insane. Um, but <laughs> when I was a flat earther, I used to get into it with chemo all the time because he, it's clear bullshit. Like, I don't, there couldn't possibly be a flat earther that was like, oh, chemo said it, so it must be real. That guy's a fucking idiot, no matter what you say or what you do. He is a snake oil salesman. How is he getting his gain? I have no idea. Maybe he enjoys Nathan's penis in his mouth, ranties. I don't know. But chemo is by far the worst because he just talks and just says stupid shit and it doesn't even matter. Okay, so Sean said chemo's an idiot. It must mm. be true. Wait a minute. Have you heard his I sticky air a argument yet? Have you ever heard a sticky air Sean, argument? Sean, I explained atmospheric pressure versus gas pressure to him. Like, oh, he's been and, doing that one for two years. He just changes it up. Yeah, yeah, he has changed it up. <laughs> but the fact was, he just couldn't grasp the difference between a bottle and the atmosphere. That's because he's chemo. He'll never understand anything anyone says. It's not what he does. He's the by far the worst person I ever talked to. Trust me, if everyone ignored every time chemo went on and never talked back to him, that's how you beat a chemo. <laughs> that's how you get rid of that's a chemo. That's how you beat a chemo. <laughs> I used to want to I'm not sure that, that works. I once listened to him talk uninterrupted for nearly three hours just because, I, just because I wanted to see how long he would go. Oh, yeah. He does it every night. Every single night. Every day. Every day. He does that on the debate flyers and more every day around for me. It's about two, three, three o'clock in the morning. He, he comes in, no one's talking and he'll just start ranting for hours on end. He does that a lot every day. That's why I stopped going there so much. I can't hint. Uh, every time I hear him talk, I just want to smack myself for listening for having to have heard him. He's bad. Oh. He's one of the worst. That's he. I'm gonna tell you right now. He was the first one I that made me really, 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 really realize there are con artists in the flat Earth movement, hundred percent that are just there laughing their asses off at people, making their money, doing whatever the fuck they're doing there. But they are laughing 
their I asses off I can't believe how many you. times you've said flat earth in this conversation. I don't give a fuck. I'm ranting right now. And it's not a topic and or what is the discussion of reality. I am telling you how I it's know it's not. It's a rant about an idiot. Yes. It's idiocy. Bitch assness, as I call it. <laughs> That's just me, though. I'm it's going your on, personal opinion. I'm caught on what fucking people, what people can take as facts and listen to versus the con artists that are spewing bullshit. And trust me, I, I think I think even Jose was saying something about it. Uh, there are con artists on all the sides. Every side is always going to have guys that are like, cha-ching. And that's why I, it's not me. You guys are not going to get a producer. Wait, I'm not, ooh, ooh, I almost lied. My bad. I will never have a paid for produced show unless Aaron produces it. He will be my only producer. He'll be my yeah, only he hasn't, paid he hasn't, gig. He hasn't paid you the 400 bucks yet. Well, it's 200 PayPal, 400 Super Chat. No, Not, it's the other way around. It's either or. It's PayPal. E- no, 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 no. Because no. if you get the 400 PayPal, uh, you get it all. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing. You know, I gotta, Trying to get you a know. win, Sean. Get well, a win, a, Sean. This, get- hey, this is business, though. I gotta, yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah. protect my investment. If this gets back to YouTube, I need to make sure that they get their cut. So if he wants to go through YouTube and have a produced show through with that, because he likes a super chat, then you know it's that's fine. And it takes me longer, so we'll probably out, you know, push the date every once in a while. But if he pays the two hundred to PayPal, then it will be a Aaron produced show. It will one hundred percent Aaron. Right. It'll be the Aaron. I don't give a fuck. It's his show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck what happens. I'll, he's the producer. He tells me what he wants to talk about and what he needs, and that's all there is to it. But that's the only contract that the Truth Army will ever sign: a, an Aaron, an Aaron dumbass show, or Dumas. I'm sorry, I don't want to be disrespectful. What being disrespectful to what dumbasses? Yeah, I'm dumbasses. <laughs> Let's make sure we all hey guys, remember I have that. a question. Hey, what's up, buddy? A little change of the subject. We have a little uh, mini discussion going on in the side chat. All right, what's up? Does anybody know of an older uh, civilization than the Australian natives? Uh, yeah. Well, the Australian natives don't count as a civilization because they were an ethnic group, not a civilization. Damn. Did you really just go so there? the way you're framing whatever, your question, whatever people call it whatever you want to people as far sure, as I we knew, have evidence of people in Africa two hundred fifty thousand years ago. What would you sorry, like? Which, you what like are their names? Who are they? Like, Never heard of them. Well, I mean, we don't have their written language, so how would we? So the what evidence, evidence do we have? The first evidence of writing is from about three thousand BC, the Sumerians. So. Before yes, that, we just have stuff talking about as a, with... as a civ- Don't the Australian people have evidence of them on the walls, hand hand prints and different yeah, it's not right pictures? It's not and right. it's not sure. Literal. And we have that from Africa. So I mean, much older than the Aborigine. So why? What's the argument? Okay, so there's evidence of uh, older civilizations in Africa than the Australian no, outback. There's no. I there's no. Word. Yeah, you keep using civilization. Civilizations is a is a more modern concept, but back then they were just tribal ethnic groups. Who the uh, the Aborigines in uh, Australia? No, I mean yes. people in well, general. Because yeah, they have okay, stories so. uh, going back like fifty, sixty thousand years. No, no, no. Okay. We have- also evidence that they could be older than 40,000 years. Say again, sorry, I missed that. We have fossil evidence that they, that the Aboriginal people could be older than 40,000 years. Okay, all right. But they don't know if they are the same species. Oh, I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, a bit tricky, that, isn't it? Cause Interesting. Complete, yeah, because they don't have a complete fossil. They can't tell whether or not it was from a 
a sapien or some other form of our human race. Gleam in the chat says Ethiopians were around before. Anybody hear that? What? Well, I mean, okay, so and there to, is a to clarify, of evidence. To clarify that, um, again, I'm always right and Davros is always wrong, um, even though he's right. Um, the Aborigines <laughs> are 75,000 years old. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, not Aborigines? official, Sean. It's yes. not official. Wow. It says, not official, it says Sean. Aborigines can be traced back to 75,000 years ago, but it became a generally di distinct group about 50,000 years ago. It is believed that they were the, the first to settle in an Australian approximately 40,000 years ago and are considered to be the direct ancestors of the present day Australians. Australians. Yeah, that's because people like to use a different wording. It's it's that are still around today. It's the oldest known living civilization that is still around to this day. Ethnic so, group. Well, they whatever you want to call they it. They didn't, the, yeah, the, but they didn't the create civilization. The, okay, well, whatever. The Aborigines are still around to this day that can be traced back to, um, like you said, 75,000 years ago. So that's there is no other group, tribe, or whatever you want to call it that is still in existence today that huh? goes back that far. Africans. Yeah, there is. No, there isn't. The Inca Empire. Okay, no, where are the Incas? Is, that's not, never you mind. See, no. You've seen the Incas mind, lately? No, wait. Well, actually, yeah. But no, um, my dates are wrong. Don't add that. Yeah, I would think certain <laughs> tribes in Africa might have a bit longer lineage than the Aboriginals of Australia, considering that's where they migrated. Well, that theory right now is that that every that uh, human beings have originated from Africa is under scrutiny because of some recent discoveries. Yeah, oh shit, they don't even fucking know, and they all run with it. And when I say they all, I be very stereotypical. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Um, well, I mean, you can find, you can always find exceptions to a rule, okay? The vast majority of the evidence shows that, you know, human beings evolved in Africa and then sporadically sent out pulses of, of colonization efforts, you know. That, of course, they were just moving around from place to place. They didn't know what they were looking for, and eventually they, we just spread out. But in the early stages you're going to have a small population group, say, move to Greece, right? And then they die out, leaving some evidence behind that they were there, but there's no, no evidence to show that they, were, they developed there. Well, see, that's the thing right? also. Well, that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize. Um, and this is how I've always looked at it. So when they say the out-of-Africa theory, that is because the oldest living, the oldest, the oldest living, wow. Did I really? The, I the oldest found fossil evidence is it's Lucy, right? I'm, I don't want to be fucking. No, stupid. it's old. It's older. It's older than that. Okay, where is that found? Do I have to find your video? Because it'll take forever to fucking explain it. You can just tell me where. It'll take about three point seven million years for me to explain. It. To, you can't say where. Uh -huh. Lucy, Lucy is the first um, Australopithecine found. Not right? the oldest. It does. Yeah, not necessarily the oldest. I think they found an older one, Sean. Where? Than Lucy. I'm not yeah, sure was, where, to be honest with it, you, it, but it, I, I read it somewhere. There's yeah, a lot of smart people outside. on this panel. My Google is broken. Can you please find it? <laughs> Yeah, we have to get broken. Blue in here because he was around at the creation. Remember that, Sean? Oh, Blue Terry. Is older than fossil hey, you know, fuel. And don't you dare, Sean, say anything about fossils in relation to me, or I'll bite you. All right, never mind. I was going to say something, but I changed my mind. <laughs> oh, come here. <laughs> so, being that it's fossil fuel, can I? Can I? Like, dig up some bones in my backyard and put them in my gas tank and drive on them? What, yeah, gonna, try it. You're going to dig up some blue marble science and put it in your gas tank? <laughs> <laughs>
I wonder who's older, Terry or Blue? Blue. Yeah, I think it's Blue. Yeah, Blue. Well, yeah, because Blue was... I think Blue said something about being a carpenter when they were building crosses. Something like... I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, he, he'd done all the wedges and the pins for the ark. Ah, there it is. He invented the... He, remember he that joke carpenter. when you get old, Sean. <laughs> I will. <laughs> I will. I already feel old. So old is Terry. Dirt. <laughs> Terry, are you like? <laughs> <laughs> You're older than dirt. That's pretty fucking old. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty. That's very old. You're older than carbon. Uh, finding a 3.8 million year old fossil in Ethiopia cast doubt on previous evolutionary theory. There it they is. They cast doubt on that theory, don't they? And in a few years from now, they're going to find an older one and an older one and ditto. Oh, but yeah, but it, it 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 doesn't matter. I mean, if they find an older fossil, that it's not that they're going to hide it from us so that we don't know where we came from. I'm pretty sure the, wherever the oldest uh, fossil evidence of of human or human like, um, see, you wouldn't even say that. You wouldn't even say that when we're talking this. Be bipedal. There you go. That's probably exactly what I'd be saying. Yeah, um, the, the, the mo- one you want to look up is Anamensis. Yeah, I can't spell that, and I'm not going to try. A N A. Yeah, yeah. Do that. To, hey, hey, tell Google. S I S. Tell, 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 <laughs> tell Google. <laughs> That's where I got it from. That's then how I'm spelling it. it to you. Then share it. No, damn it. No, no, do your own fucking research. What no, am I? You fucking Sorry. pigeon. Yes. You're fucking you, Alexa. Tesla? Yes. Alexa, yeah, you, demonic Tesla? Alexa. And, and I'm your pigeon. What's what's the weather? Demonic Davros, Alexa, what's the what weather? What is the weather? <laughs> nice Alexa Davros, what's today. the weather? Clocked out at forty one yesterday and we're sitting at twenty four right now. See? Yeah, you work. See? <laughs> well you well you can have our weather then, Davros. Is there anybody Alexa, who can no, no, fix no. this? No, no, no. Is there we're anyone that can fix or... this glitch I have in, in my Davros? <laughs> <laughs> about to turn it off and then turn it back on again. Oh, okay. Hang on. Have you tried plugging him in? Uh, uh, I just restarted him. Uh, okay. We'll see what spits out. <laughs> I think you fixed it. I think so. Did, did he boot back up? Davros, what is the weather? <laughs> Sean, I'm just getting you the link to your previous question. Fuck, See, <laughs> Barney, <laughs> Barney, you I'd know software. That, you know program, Barney. That thing, I need Sean, it. it doesn't work. It, there's no return. I've been trying. Send Dude, you get, you get what you pay for. Well, Barney, you're a programmer. Can <laughs> you program my Davros, please? As I said, you get what you pay for. <laughs> Davros, did you, put a, did you put a pickup of Sean? That hurts, Terry. Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't Jimmy. looking properly. Wrong page. There you go. There you go, Sean. There's the weather report. Thank you, Davros. Yeah, yeah, you can have our... No, no, no. You, you took sorry. it from me. You took it from me. No. Yeah, but you what, all it. the smoke too? And the smoke? No, 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 no. We've got our own. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Davros. <laughs> You're welcome, Sean. <clears throat> 22 is like below freezing no 22, 22 is out it is yeah. like our 60 degrees yeah well they keep throwing these foreign measurements at us sean oh, hey, I was sorry, right. hey, sorry for using sorry for working correct, right? in 10 i was sorry, correct. Working in 10. This, have a look what at the correct davros there are only two types of units in this world crappy units and freedom units yeah, but freedom <laughs> units suck because if you get one freedom inch and you turn it into centimeters, it's two point five four. What the fuck is even about that? 
I'm it, sorry it, that you had to invent a new system that sucks. It's even worse. The freedom units are defined in the crappy units. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you are a lot of worse than crash. Exactly. I have no idea what you said, Circular, because it was one long. Yeah, you are on some definitely. You're definitely on some slow me down. <laughs> did, did you not hear that? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I'm not with any of you. <laughs> no, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a sound effect here. That properly. Who does this? I've who does this no remind you of, Sean? To hold me down. Ready? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Quiet for a second. Here it goes. Oh, is that your fist, Kaiser? <laughs> no, 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 Maxwell's got his fish. He's pleading the fish. Oh. <laughs> it could have been a can of tuna. Oh, you my would God. say that, old guy. Get your mind out of the gutter. No, like Aaron. If, if, Terry was, if Terry was as old as dirt, it'd be a tin of sardines. They didn't have ten then. <laughs> he predates okay. ten. <laughs> pre metal, pre metal society. How about now? Much better. Oh, yeah. There you are. I was going to say there are two types of measurement systems in the world. Uh, the one that put astronauts on the moon and metric. I'm gonna go with the one that put astronauts on. The moon. <laughs> hey, 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 circular, circular. What, whoever yeah. is in the background tapping on a metal pole. Do me a favor and go smack them for me. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Ow. Ow. <laughs> are, are you really doing that? Like, you're either eating or making sounds. No. Uh, I'll, I'll mute. He's on the road somewhere. He's there, are two types, there are two types of measurement systems in the world. Metric and metric derived. I was going to say right put, and wrong. Metric, metric puts puts the astronauts on the moon. Standard takes thinking. Did you say I astronauts in, on uh, the moon? Oh, I, I went go. in the subway. <laughs> I, I, I moon moon the subway the I went in the subway the other day and I asked for a 30 centimeter and they didn't know what I was talking about. Well, because because you know, twelve inches is not thirty centimeters, right? It's all Sean's fault. Crickets. <laughs> chirp, chirp, chirp. Was there a question or something? Is that a question? That is the question. I think we're talking about <laughs> evolution if you're talking about fossils. Well, actually, we were just talking about the out of Africa theory and that the fact that the oldest known fossil of our earliest ancestor is around 3.8 billion years and was found in Ethiopia. Right, but well, we were talking about civilization and I just did a check and somebody was right, 75,000 years was the Australian Aborigines. Buddha judge. Buddha judge. <laughs> of course, Maxwell has to bring up the butt joke. Yeah, but you know that politicians are just an ass anyway, all right? Sorry, I was memeing. What was the what was that about seventy five thousand year old civilization? <laughs> Were you memeing? Somebody finally got memeing. that, eh? Well, I you asked the question. 
Yeah, as as no name said, I thought civilizations had to have been able to start agriculture. No name's just trying Did to they? get to level five. Did they, they not have they? agriculture? The Aborigines in Australia. Nope. No. They didn't make crops. They planted they crops, off... no? Nope. 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 They lived off the land. They Hunter gatherers. Yeah, yeah, nomad, yeah they were nomadic. Fishing and berries and roots. And cannibalism. Okay. And, and, and barbecue when there was a fire. Shrimp yeah, on the barbie. Yeah, or prongs on the barbie. Don't forget about Murray. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. no, don't bring up the oh, Murray conundrum. I nearly forgot about Murray. <laughs> yeah, I showed and everyone saying that. About, oh, sorry. Sorry, Sean. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Terry. I respect my elders. I was going to say, you were talking about early writings and saying that Aboriginals um, didn't do a form of writing for their cave paintings because that was a form of storytelling. Well, That's what I thought. I had I thought that that was considered writing what they had on the walls. No, no, no. It's pictography. It's different. How do you know it wasn't yeah, just some to... kid playing with a freaking rock? And and they, and they I think they developed spray painting first too. Yeah, they did. They, <laughs> they, would, they would. Well, they did. They would create the, the with their mouth. Yeah. They would yeah put it in their mouth and then spray it over their hands, or they would use a. Uh, ends of, I, I'm not sure if they were bottle brushes or whatnot, to do filling ins for their drawings. These kids it's... these days putting paint in their <laughs> mouth, putting tags on all the cave walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Penis? Aboriginals yeah, are yeah, spray an early painting. Form of tagging. Yeah, early form of tagging. Yeah, it's just graffiti. <laughs> yeah. I was here. Yeah, but he wasn't there now. Terry, you're not Waz. Waz wasn't there. Oh, sorry. Where are you from, Terry? Where's your yeah. partner from? He's from out Where's front, my... not out back. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, you're from the Aussie experience, right? He is the Aussie, is the Aussie, the Aussie, 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 Aussie yeah. perspective, yeah. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. That sounds so wrong coming from you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just yeah, your but you're not a real Aussie. Happen. You didn't reply, so... I don't well, know. Well, I'm, not, I'm not Victor yeah, Victor yeah. Victorians would have replied to that, but I'm New South yeah. Welshman, so I, yeah, I don't know Yeah, they would have gone, oi, 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 but we would have gone, yeah. Uh, he's from South Wales. You want to think, if you would have gone, meh, 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 he would have been on it. No, oh, not Wales, like as over had... in Britain. <laughs> oh, South geez. Wales in Australia. Brian's got Someone experience up... with shit. Someone broke our Brian again. Yeah, <laughs> uh, sounds like it. It, it would have been Brian, better if only Sheeple can see was on. Yeah, Brian wears gum boots to work. How? He's a sheep. What'd you say? <laughs> gun boots? <laughs> No, don't. Oh, don't you know? Yeah, I, I know. Oh, no, Brian. What, <laughs> why do New Zealand sheep herders wear gum boots? Gum boots? You mean All shit right. kickers? Let's talk about chemtrails. So they yeah, that sounds the, better, so Sean. They can put the back okay, legs so in. Liberty Bird in the, ch in the chat. I just wasted a good burp, so I didn't do it in your guys' ear. Damn it. Um, ah. so earlier, uh, they had asked to talk about chemtrails. So I asked which chemtrails they're speaking about. Lemon Liberty Bird says, planes, cloud seeding, the sky, the aluminum oxides and iron oxides, etc." Okay. Well, cloud seeding isn't chemtrailing. Cloud seeding is cloud seeding. And I thought that was silver nitrate. It's silver iodine or silver... Oh, hang on. 
I don't want to fuck. I haven't said even talk about. You it might have to ask, ask it's, Devros. Oh yeah, yeah, Devros. What did they use in cloud seeding, Devros? Yeah. Explain it to well, us. See, this is the thing, right? If you plant <laughs> your seed in the cloud, it cannot grow for you, and you cannot get Jesus to come with you. Does it have to be at the same what? time? It's kind of. I, never mind. <laughs> So it's silver, yeah, it's silver. Um, and what did they used to use that silver, whatever it was for? Yeah, to try and create rain. Yeah, well, what if it was like the aluminum? But that had to be clouds to do that. Yes, it had. No, it doesn't have to be clouds. It has to be moisture in the air. But cloud seeding means that they're seeding the cloud. Yeah, that's what I was inferring. Yeah, but technically the the planes that are seeding the clouds are leaving chemtrails. No. Contrails. No. Chemtrails. They're spraying chemicals into the air. Yeah, but they're also leaving contrails. They well, yeah, yes. all planes are leaving Barney, contrails. Here's the thing. Yes, Barney the was term, correct because the one is not spraying correct. the silver Barney into the clouds. Barney is not correct. No. But if they're spraying nope. the chemical nope. silver nope. oxide again, into the clouds, they're doing a chemtrail. No, they're not. It's not a trail. What, it's you not a chemical a trail. trailing behind the plane? No. It's not a trail. You, you don't even see there. it. Just because you, you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so for the since... record, the term chem the term chemtrail is a conspiracy theorist uh term it's a term that is does not coin anything does not describe anything except for an ideal of what's happening Sean, can, well can since we're talking about in the air outside your window? since we're Excuse talking me? about trails can I see it since we're Where? talking about trails can we talk about murray's entrails Excuse me? <laughs> what did you just say to me? Oh, murray. <laughs> Who the okay murray? so you get stranded on an island right <laughs> And wait, what's going on? You... wait, wait, stop. What's <laughs> happening right now? What is uh, happening? Sure, Sean, about... does, doesn't Sean know about Murray? No. We're talking yeah, we about Murray, tribal... Murray's entrails. Yeah. yeah, we have to get trials. Remember to pull one out for cycle. Murray, guys. Yeah, your 30 cycles are up. It's your turn. Now, do we Pick celebrate it? time, Sean. You miss out on a lot. Terry, what the day Eagles is it to you? Uh, no, it hasn't. Tuesday. That happened a long time ago. Are you telling me it it's New Year's Eve? two weeks ago. Wait, you think I don't... Okay, yeah, there's a problem there. If you really think I would remember two weeks ago, we we got a real big problem, and it's on your end. Well, no, because I need to borrow your bowl for a minute, Sean. You, wouldn't, you couldn't last. Well, no, it's so I can forget. I don't forget everything. I still remember all <laughs> you this You forgot about Murray. Shit. I mean, come I, on. What do you mean for... I don't... I wasn't there. How do I forget about a Murray? Who is Murray? Who were they? Was I? Murray was the sacrificial human, okay, because he'd passed his 30 cycles and he was going to be killed for the good of the tribe. Who the hell told me that? I wasn't there. I don't, yeah, I don't think Sean was there. Well, Devil, actually, see, you're, you're wrong something. again. No, I need Sean to do something. I need Sean to go and have another pup and come Jesus. back and say sorry. I wasn't there. Because he disrespected Murray. Who the oh, was fuck is Murray? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a hypothetical. But, so there, you're stranded on this island, and you're Murray. You're Murray. You're fucking and, Murray. <laughs> no, that's, the wrong, that's the wrong hypothetical, Maxwell. The Murray hypothetical was the tribe member who had to be killed for the greater good of the community. The other hypothetical was you're stranded on the island, and... The bloke who's killed the other three survivors comes up and says, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. What do you do? Do you preemptively kill that guy or do you wait for him to come and defend yourself? Yeah, because he was eating the other people. So are you going to let him come and try to kill you and eat you or are you going to go kill him and eat him? Are you going to eat Murray's entrails? No, you <laughs> save them for dessert. Actually, I was thinking more using his entrails this, to this make is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go outside. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Eagle has landed. 
and I'm gonna let you guys finish Sean. this. And I saw the people you, in the I chat. Want you to get who, me a picture. So I want, the people, I want you to take uh, a picture. the people in the chat that are okay. talking about chemtrails, I will learn you some and tell you how you were right and wrong at the same time. Don't worry. Uh, fight the deception. I'll, I'll I'll explain everything in a second. Well, what what's up, wrong Davros? Let's just stay uh, on, can, on chemtrails. Yeah, Ooh. I need you to take a photo of nitrogen in the atmosphere while you're out there. Okay, I will. But you need to be able to. No, don't move the goalposts. Arrow. Don't move the goalposts. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Do not move goalposts. Stop it. Stop it. I'm going on. You guys have three minutes to think about what you've done. What's oh, that all? No. Three. I thought it was two and two. Equals three, yeah, it's about right. But does that equal the fifth? <laughs> it can, because three plus two is five, and five divided by zero is five. Yeah, I heard it. Oh. I heard that. It's true. Uh, so, sorry, Blue. Sorry, we're confusing you, but. Um, <laughs> come <on> trails. Yeah. <laughs> hey, get in here, blue, and straighten us all out. Come on, blue. We need someone who was there at the beginning of our civilization. Yeah, Terry's not being our um, adult tonight, so we need. <laughs> <laughs> Our old friend uh, 444, the truth is back. Oh, yeah, I've been making fun of him. The Georgia Guide Stones, really? If I was a millionaire, I'd put some granite stones up somewhere and said some shit that people would bite over. And send. I mean, the stones that uh, they want to reduce to the, the population to 650 million? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but I, I would change it. I would, I would like, say something like, uh, in the next 10 years, aliens are coming to eat all the humans. So every time they'd look at it, they'd always think, oh, in 10 years. And then in, the new generation would come up and see it, and they'd see it, and they'd go, oh, in 10 years, aliens are coming. Oh, don't put a date on it. Just set it somewhere with the vague term of 10 years. Yeah. At the end of 10 years, just move it somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. I'm just... <laughs> kind of like the return to the moon they keep promising every president, right? What do you mean every president? Yeah. It's like it's like uh, running for president of your student council, though, and you're promising free drinks in the lunchroom or something. I mean, a president president doesn't have any real ability to make that. Decision. Congress totally has agree. fun, but it's funny how they all do it, no? Yeah, the head of NASA, the head of NASA th seems to think they're going back. Maybe ask him. Yeah, yeah I, didn't they I'd just like test the, they just tested the damn rocket, didn't they? Yeah, I'd like to know when George W. Bush said that we were returning to the moon. Was he an exception? But you just said every president. Look, I could be wrong, but you, I've seen uh, clips where you see them one after the other, you know, from uh, from Kennedy. I think George Washington might have said it first. <laughs> now, I don't think any of them to the moon. I know um, Reagan got to oversee the uh, the launch. Is it the launch of the of the shuttles? I don't. One think... of these days, straight to the moon. Thank I, think, I don't think jo I don't think Ford uh, mentioned anything about space. I'm not sure if uh, Bush Senior did either. Now that I think about it. 
I used to watch that show religiously, Barney. What do you guys think of the new Space Force? <laughs> I honestly know nothing about it other than it's a pretty good joke. I still think it's pointless. This what's what's the point? I mean, that shit is all it is. It is another. The... I think they should reinstate conscription, and everybody who comes out as a flat earther needs to be conscripted into the space force. <laughs> One hundred. Hey, that's your guys' idea. I just want to say, I want to say for the record. Going. Say for the record, the sp uh, space uh, force has always been around since the forties. Oh. Wait, what? I wasn't aware. Yep. Yeah, I haven't heard of the secret Space Force. Yeah, I I, uh, I looked uh, it up. Yeah. Space Force, in one form or another, has been in, in existence. Yeah, since doesn't the 40s. doesn't everybody else have their decoder rings yet? I'll show you. What your decoder ring? Yeah, my my it goes along. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're blazed now, Sean. Oh yeah. Hang on, give me a second. I'll find it because I have pictures of it. Pictures of my evidence, of my truth, to be verified. Please tell me it's. Please tell me it's not Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. Uh, yeah, yeah, I have some no, no, change no. Uh, from space to sell you guys. Interest? It's Flash Gordon. I have a dollar. It's been to the moon. So, so um. Quotes of presidents saying stuff about the moon. How about um, any other quotes from NASA saying that that was stated goal? I'd love to see that. Ask Devros. I mean, uh, Jim Bradenstein just made uh, another statement a couple of days ago. I don't recall in my memory ever a head of NASA saying they were going back. Because it hasn't been a, a NASA priority. They want to go further. We've yeah. already been to the The only reason why they're they're going along with this moon plan is because it'll make launching things into deep space easier. Yeah, I've been looking into it. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, but they've been saying that for 60 years now, guys. Sure, and the government keeps cutting their funding. I mean, Von Braun had originally come up with the idea of, of, a, of a low orbit launch platform system, and Congress shot him down because they wanted to quickly get to the moon to win the space race. And yep. that was all they were interested in. They just wanted to show the Russians we could do it first and better. And then once we did, the Russians gave up. And once, once the, the popular support for it went away, you couldn't convince the American people that we needed to spend money on that versus money on other things. And that's yep. pretty much what it came down to. Hey, Brian. This is I well documented. I, I, I love the euphemism of one of the biggest um, federations in the world falling apart as, well, the Russians gave up. <laughs> they gave up. They gave up. The government. Well, that's, that's fair, Barty. I mean, you're right. Yeah, they did fall <laughs> apart. But, I mean, they gave up before they fell apart. Well, yeah, well, never give up man. on anything. Uh, that, that's, why, that's why America is currently hitching rides on Soyuz to get to the I, Internet. I, I, yeah, 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 they never actually yeah, gave up. Specifically <laughs> talking about the moon, Barty. Exactly, Barty. Specifically yes. talking about the moon. From, from Kazakhstan. <laughs> Of all From places, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan yeah. Borat country, right? Of farmers oh, and my, my girlfriend, she has yes. she has vagina like shirt sleeve. Yeah, Kazakhstan is like the Florida of the world. Oh come on, Dad! <laughs> if you're gonna do that scene, at least do it right. It's a, and when she turned to fifteen, her voice become a deep Borat Borat. Her back go out, her chest get a hair, and her vagine hang like sleeve of wizard. <laughs> hey, sure. Brian, have you seen that? Have you seen that uh, medical? Uh, I seen this video, but it wasn't it wasn't a flat Earth video or a discrepancy video. It was it was a scientific uh, study from from like a, a, a reputable YouTube channel. It wasn't this conspiracy 
YouTube channel. It was just it's, it was more like an information channel. When they do a lot of stuff and they talked about uh, the body in space and how I can't remember what astronaut it was, but uh, they've seen the effects of the reverse of blood flow uh, and and heart failure because of uh, prolonged exposure into zero zero G. Yep. Uh, so what what do you think of that? I mean, how are they ever going to go to Mars uh, when there's such drastic effects on the human body? Is it? And it depends possible? on how long they're going to be in space. Like, uh, what's the longest anyone's ever stayed in uh, the ISS? Six hundred and something days. Six hundred and sixty-five days. That was uh, Peggy Whitson. Yeah, it doesn't take nearly that amount of time to get to Mars. So as long as they yep, got to somewhere, send... somewhere with gravity. Send be... Was that the same guy that had like heart problems and reverse blood flow and crap like that? I have no idea uh, what you're referring to. I'd have to look at it, but that's interesting that you could have some that you could actually have some uh, backup if he had some sort of regurgitation with uh, with fault with faulty um, uh, vessel valves. I, I can I can back him up. That's that's genuine research. Um, they found that uh, under low G and zero G, um, the human circulatory system actually fucks up, and the the valves in veins start circulating the bo- the blood b- backwards to some extent. And uh, like there there is some risk involved. It's not like Oh, you get into z- zero G and then you're dead, right? It it does okay, put yes. a strain. It does put a strain on the body, and that is something that they have to deal with before the the mission to Mars. Okay, like, so, it, it, so it's large vessel is large vessel large vessel valvular regurgitation then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Dude. Uh, if you could point doctor, this out, I would so... love to see it. That actually sounds really interesting to read. Like, I'm not poo-pooing it. I just really have no idea. I've never read this information. Yeah, that's why I was asking you, because you're the, you're the doctor, and I figured you would. So that sounds probably like what it would be then, right? Yeah. Um, see, the valve is not having anything to actually close them back down, because a lot of what we do is gravity-assisted. That's interesting. I mean, even so even your sense of direction is based on gravity. The otoliths in your ear are sitting against the membrane, weighing it down, and that determines and that and shifts of that determine uh, your up from down versus um, your rota- versus your rotational, which is uh, which is actually due to fluid lag in three semicircular canals um, in a different portion of your ear. Yeah, I knew about the ear thing. I didn't know about the heart thing. No, that was that's, that's neat. All right, I found what I was looking for, so I'll share it on. If you guys hit the live link, you'll see it. And then I'll share my screen with peoples. So they can see. There you go. Yeah, see, these had space forces for a very long time. This is the um, fourth the fourth space operation squadron it was in started in 94 um I'm trying to remember the ones that were old the here's the space, paper here's one first space organ organizations uh, operation schedule squadron 1961 to 1967 87 to the present day so when they say they just started a space force with such crap. Still haven't seen your decoder ring, Sean. Uh, who, who was I asking for a source on reverse circulation? I've posted the paper itself in, in the live stream text. It cites that there were seven seven instances of crew members who demonstrated stagnant or retrograde IJV blood flow during space flight. That's pretty bizarre. Yep, that's large vascular that's large uh, vessel valvular regurgitation. That's really cool. 
Well, I mean, it sucks, so, but it's really cool. So was that during during ascent, or was it during traversing in the ice? I'm asking because I can't be fucked reading it. I think it's due to the zero G environment that they're in over a prolonged uh, period of time. During long duration space flight, when participants were exposed to a sustain, sustained headward blood and tissue fluid shift. So, no, not during liftoff, but during zero G, during pro prolonged microgravity. Microgravity. The measurements were taken before launch and, and approximately 40 days after landing. Okay. And 50 days and 150 days into the space flight during normal space flight conditions. Ooh, someone had an occlusive IV, is it IJV uh, thrombus. Yeah, that's heart failure, right? Uh, no, that's the um, uh, that is um, uh, it's essentially a blood clot. Yeah, thrombosis is a blood clot. It's not even an infarction. Come on. Although a it clot can cause was an infarction, fine. Although, although that can <laughs> cause an ischemic infarction. It can cause an infarction, but it didn't. It was so, fine. It, it'll be a, fine. A we can send them to Mars. <laughs> what was that? No, I mean, isn't isn't NASA working on a proof of concept um, rotating habitat to provide some artificial gravity on the way on the longer? I was going to ask that. Why are we doing that? I don't well, think that because it's rotate. expensive. No, Stanley. Cooper this one. Dead, this one. I'll find the link. This one's in. This one's inflatable, so it's not as expensive. But I'll because <laughs> oh, it's helium. No, it's not helium. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no, it's lighter. It's lighter. <coughs> Davro, he's silly, but yeah. And the novelty of their voices being so high will help them deal with the psychological problems of space flight. All right, guys. Uh... I'm going to have to end the stream. You guys can continue the conversation. Uh, I'll be right back, but uh, I have to uh, end the stream and get some stuff around the house done. Oh. Well, I can, oh. Uh, oh. You guys just continue to talk. Shut up, Terry. I know that, was, that wasn't sentimental at all. That was very vindictive of an awe you had there. Sean. You're yes, fine. sir. You know. Do we need to do a peer, peer review, review before we... Peer review it. Okay. We're all foreigners. Okay. We're all foreigners, mate. Brian, is Davros a foreigner? Oh, wait, wait. It's me. Wait, I'm being accused. Wait. Yeah. I have, oh, yeah. You're a foreigner okay. in here. Okay. Bucko. Brian, Barney, am I a foreigner? Uh, to Davros, are. you are. Brian, are you a foreigner? Or am I a foreigner? To Davros, you, you all are. of you are foreigners. No, no, I'm Bloody talking about, in your opinion, this isn't a pond Davros. This is a peer review. Get it right. Get it together. Okay. Uh, Bloody Yankees, or... Palms, and Aussies. You smell of cheap. <laughs> All right. So the majority Terrible of my blood cheap. says, uh, it says uh, no, you're not a foreigner. The rest of it Thank says, you. get off my land. <laughs> Circular <laughs> thinking. Seeing how you live in America, I hope you have a good answer. Am I a foreigner? Ooh. Yes. You're an Carlos. alien. Uh, Carlos, I see. Am I a foreigner? Hello? Carlos is very far away. <laughs> Davros, you, your your vote does not count. GPS, if you're still here and you want to <laughs> and let us know in the chat, am I a foreigner? Uh, until then, no name, am I a foreigner? 
in this this well, you're you're, local. you're you're Californian, so to me, yeah, you're kind of kind of a foreigner. All right, Terry. Mike check. Mike is checked. Yeah. Am I a foreigner? For you? To me, you are. Maxwell. <laughs> Wait a minute. You live in California? Yes. Yes, you're definitely a foreigner. Montreal. If you don't belong to a North American tribe, you're a foreigner. If, oh. you, if you don't live in the great state of Oklahoma, you're a foreigner. <laughs> okay. So what this piece You're an is, invading species. Uh, Blue, did you want to respond? I'm not sure I got sight gate here. Uh, no. Thank you. So everyone who said anything besides no, you that I am not me? a foreigner. I... Wait a minute. I got to change my vote. I plead the fifth. <laughs> Carlos, am I a foreigner? To be a foreigner, it would require for you to be from the outside, and we live in an enclosed system. Therefore, <laughs> <laughs> and with that, right, I say, some double I, speaking. <laughs> and with that, I say good day. I will give you my response to your guys' peer review study on the YouTube side. No, you what? All right, guys. So now they can't hear us and we can't hear them. All right. Um, they're all batshit crazy wrong. I am not a foreigner. They are all foreigners. Remember that shit. Don't forget it. Uh, fun stream. Um, I will be back tomorrow and we'll see what's going on. Um, I think I'm going to do a New Year's stream. We'll see how it goes, though. With that being said, peace.